your enemies and watch them crumble to dust before your eyes and this is how you do it you will now learn a historical chess opening that has been used to blow opponents off the board for more than 400 years get ready for the fried liver attack you play with the white pieces and you open with the king's pawn, e4. When your opponents are playing with the black pieces against your pawn to e4, they will most often reply symmetrically with pawn to e5. And here is the concept of this particular opening, the fried liver. You are going to ask your opponent questions on every single move until they can't answer them anymore and they crumble and turn into dust before your eyes. The first question you ask is when develop your knight to f3 and orient it towards the e5 pawn attacking it you are asking the question how are you going to defend that pawn? The most common move, the most logical and intuitive move, and indeed one of the best moves in the position is knight to c6 defending the pawn. Here you are going to pick up your bishop, you're going to place it on c4. Why? What is this question? Well, this signals what this whole opening is about. Because this bishop attacks the pawn on f7 and this particular pawn here on f7 is the only square in black's position that is only defended by a single piece and it's worse than that for black because it's only defended by the king the most vulnerable piece and your target in this opening now this is a very very standard position you will get this in so so many games there is a couple of different ways your opponent can respond in this uh, in this position if they play knight to f6 we get the fried liver attack which is what the whole of this video is about there's just a small suggestion that they may also play bishop to c5 and I have a link in the description for another video about the Max Lang attack, where if they play this, you can transpose in to the Max Lang attack, and there's a whole video on that. But not in this video. In this video, we are going to look at what to do if they play knight to f6, which is one of the most popular moves. And what is it that we want to do? We want to ask questions ask questions ask questions and we have the bishop developed we have the knight developed what if we pick up the knight we put it on g5 coordinating an attack with the bishop and the knight on f7 here is a very very difficult question to answer already how are you going to defend this position as black this pawn is very very vulnerable because it's only defended by the king sometimes you will see them trying to, to defend it with the queen and this simply doesn't it doesn't work just pick up the bishop capture the pawn that is check if they capture with the queen you capture the queen with the knight that's why it's there so they have to move the king you can just move the bishop back now you are threatening to come in here with a fork for the king and the rook and also you have one a pawn 
and also the king cannot castle anymore because the king has moved. So, queen to e7 defending doesn't work. So we put the bishop back here on c4. This is the position. In fact, there's only really one single move that black can play here. So there's only one correct answer to the questions that you as white are asking. And if you would like to study that move on this particular board, then I have good news for you. The chess board we are using here is the World Chess Academy Edition, the same piece design that the World Chess Championship is played on. If you want to practice the fried liver on this board so you can feel like a world champion, I have a link in the description that will take you to the World Chess Shop and you can put in the promo code ASMR Chess 10 to get a 10% discount because the ASMR Chess audience always deserves a little extra. The promo code works for this set and indeed for all products that they sell in their shop, including the premium chess sets. Promo code ASMR Chess 10, link in the description. There's only one move. What is it? In most games, black finds pawn to d5. So now the bishop isn't really attacking f7 anymore. And what do you do? You continue asking questions. Pick up the pawn and you capture this pawn. Why? Well, here you are attacking the knight. So you're asking a question of the knight. Where are you going to go? And here black thinks that they are really clever. Because they will almost always find the moves in the database, online database on leeches and other places confirm that black are able to, they are able to find the moves, the move knight takes d5. And they think they are very clever. Because when they do this, they capture this pawn here, they see that now their queen is threatening to come in and capture this knight on g5. And also the queen is protecting the knight. What do we want to do? We want to ask questions. So they want to capture our knight on g5. How can we prevent that? Well, they can't capture the knight on g5 if it isn't on g5. Pick up the knight and you capture on f7. This is where it really gets fun. This is where it gets interesting. Because one thing that this amazing opening that has been with us as chess players for more than 400 years, one thing that it also teaches us is that it doesn't, the game is not about the pieces that leave the board. It's about the pieces that stay on the board. So you are going to quite liberally sacrifice pieces in many positions. And this one is the thematic first sacrifice that you're going to do. What does it do? Well, can come and capture the queen <laughs> in the night. The queen can come. It's not, in, it's not there anymore. Also, it attacks the queen. Hello, your majesty. And the rook. So really, there is no time to try and save this knight. There's only one thing that you can really do here with black and in all games in the database, black picks up the king and captures the knight. So why did you sacrifice this? Why are you okay with giving up a strong piece such as a knight for something as, as weak as a pawn? because this helps you asking all the right questions. And here you take the strongest piece, the queen, put it on f3, asking another question. And here comes something really, 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 really cool. This opening is played a lot at the lower levels. Actually also grandmasters can play this, but 
because it's such an intuitive opening you will see so many games with this so it's just perfect for beginners where you know if you learn some really really advanced opening your opponent's going to play something that's not in the book and you don't know what to do but here they will so often play exactly what you want them to and when they don't the questions that you ask are so concrete that you're just going to absolutely wreck them and destroy them in the leeches database of the players on leeches uh, we can see that there are three million games in this position so three million times this position has been reached and 300,000 times that's 10 percent in one in every 10 games black plays king to g8 getting out of the attack and you know sort of kind of getting the kings to safety and um, this loses instantly 300 thousand black players lost like this so what is the move this is like this is one of the reasons that we should play this opening it gives you so much satisfaction there are two ways you can do it and i would argue that one of them even though they both win one of them is correct and the other one isn't the correct way i think is queen takes knight because that is check and there are really one move only, which is queen takes queen to stop it. And then bishop takes queen so that you win the game having only one piece developed and all the others are on their starting squares and you sacrificed a bunch of them. But what is the king going to do? There is only one legal move here, which is to interpose the bishop. You then capture the bishop and that my friend is checkmate so that is one way to win the game 300,000 black players lost like this uh, and you could of course also capture with the bishop first and end up having a queen here but you know always better to have less material and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually go all the way back to the beginning because repetition is very good for learning openings and I will quickly go through the position or the, or the moves so far. e4, e5, knight f3 asking the first question what are you going to do about the attack? They defend knight c6. You develop the bishop, bishop c4. They play knight f6. You ask another question, knight g5 here and here you can remember that if they play anything besides pawn to d5 you're just coming in and capturing this pawn and you have a very good game so they play pawn to d5 you capture not with the bishop but with the pawn attacking the knight they come in and capture they feel so so clever because now they can capture your knight you know that it's not about the pieces leaving the board it's about where those who stay and their position so you capture the f7 pawn with your knight and this is the first all of this is the first wave of the fried liver attack the first wave is focused on f7 here the king comes in capturing and you give the check so we saw that this is losing what else could black do well I'll show you that the correct move is going here and I'll explain it but first if just to mention that if black goes anywhere else go here here go back let's say they go back you simply come in you capture now you are equal on material again all the same pieces except black is now down a pawn so you are up a pawn and your attack is raging on your for instance threatening to come in with a checkmate here so the only way so this would just be like 
a winning position for white it's pretty easy to play you would be very happy to be here the only way that black can try to have any sort of game at all is let me put the pieces back here the knight and the king here the only way is to play king to e6 because the queen is attacking the knight the bishop is attacking the knight and the queen is the only one defending it if you don't come up with the king black comes up here the forcing move defending the knight so what are you going to do you ask questions but now the first wave of the attack was on f7 now you are moving the second wave we're going to the second wave and that will be on d5 this night so you started asking questions here and you got this answer and if they gave you any other answer you would just be winning so now you start questioning them about this answer the first question is play knight c3 turn it towards the knight you're saying i have one two three attackers on my focus square here d5 on the second wave how many defenders do you have well one and two so what can black do one move that they could do would be knight to e7 403 years ago in 1620 a guy called greco from italy uh, played a game that showed why this doesn't work and i have a video about that and it's linked in the description something else that is a very bad move but you will see many many players play it uh, it's the third most popular move in the database is knight to d4 saying okay i'm going to attack your queen i may catch your here on c2 with a check and a fork and the problem is that this knight is still attacked three times and you can capture it with check and here there is no way that black can get out of the check and you then have any sort of time to attack the queen you will no matter what black does you will always have time to get the queen to a good square and continue the attack so this doesn't work at all okay so knight to e7 doesn't work knight trying to counter attack also doesn't work by process of elimination like can the rook defend the knight no can the bishop no the queen is already the king is already this guy can get there this one can't there's only one piece so it has to be the knight and in many many cases they will find the correct move which is knight to be full defending so now, now the sister knights are defending each other this knight covers her sister but also it is looking at c2 and when you cook the fried liver and you are going to eat it remember the fork on c2 the knight would be forking your king and your rook so here you pretend you pretend that you are afraid of this dangerous move that your opponent is playing and you castle a seemingly defensive move this move is actually not defensive at all in fact this is just saying this knight no longer can come in with check here so if it comes in and captures here you're just going to shred the knight here on on d5 because your second wave of the attack remember the first wave was on f7 second wave on d5 and you're just going to shred your opponent on d5 if they leave the defense here 
and black will sit here and wonder okay what can i do so i should develop my pieces i should do this i should do that but if they do anything but the exact correct move if they do anything except the correct move you are just going to play pawn to a3 asking a question of the knight where it can come capture somewhere and when it moves when the knight moves it will no longer be protecting here you will come in and capture with the bishop or the knight and you'll just shred the king so in most cases black does find the correct move they find out that you are going to chase the knight away and they can't allow that so they play pawn to c6 that is the only answer so you are asking all the questions so knight, pawn to c6 here defending the knight and saying that okay if you attack me now i can actually come in and capture here that is the only only move to uh, stay in the game for black so you are asking all these questions and you are asking questions that are easy for you to ask because you were wise and watched this video but you're asking questions that are very difficult to answer there's only one correct answer and you just you're just going to melt your opponent if they if they mess up even once so pawn to c6 in many cases they find the move and if they do if they get all the way to this position here you are going to the third wave of the attack first wave f7 second wave d5 and now you are attacking on e5 because you want all your friends to the party you play pawn to d4 like this what is this about so you are now moving the focus to this e5 pawn that you can come in and capture and also remember when you castled and you presented it was a defensive move where in fact it was aggressive because now the rook is actually active and can come to e1 or d1 depending on the needs of the position so you got to this position by just asking questions that were easy for you to ask but difficult to answer and here uh, most players in the leeches database play well what may be an intuitive move for a beginner or an improving chess player and just picking up the knight and capturing here on c2 turning the knight and saying hey i'm going to capture the rook i'm going to get a lot of pieces i will win a lot of pieces that's good right but you know as the wise watcher or viewer of asma chess you know that it's not about all the pieces that are leaving the action it's about the pieces in the fray it's about the pieces in the action so white is completely winning now after this move which is the most popular move in the position you just have to know one move here take the rook and you put it on d1 here and uh, you are simply saying that you're going to bring all the pieces to the party you are just going you're looking at there are so many pieces on the board but you're looking at one of them this guy coming coming for the king coming for the majesty and happily your opponent will pick up the knight and capture the rook but look like look at that knight it will slowly turn and with sadness in its eyes it will realize that it it has strayed too far from the golden path and now it is it is so offside that it can come back and help the majesty and your opponent will 
Look at the pieces they have captured. One pawn. Two pawns. Knight. Rook. And the pieces that you have captured. Just two measly pawns. And they will say, I'm up so much material. And it's true. There's a lot of pieces here. But all of white's pieces are doing something amazing. They are all looking at d5, e5, and the king. And after all of this, you just capture this pawn, d takes e, I'm just going to ask a very open-ended question to black, what are you going to do? Because you have all these pieces as black, but none of them do anything. And there's there's just no move here. There's just no way to protect on d5. There's the knight can't come back. There's no none of the pieces that can come back and protect on d5. Black A is completely busted. One of the moves that they try sometimes is queen to a5. So with the queen here, I'm just going to show a variation. Um, it's um, black there's just a bunch of moves that black can try and they all end in the same kind of way with you just shredding the king and the way that you uh, you do it is basically you just want to melt the square d5 you capture with the knight they capture with the pawn here you don't capture with the queen queen takes because then they could qu trade queens you don't want that because you need the queen to checkmate you don't capture with the rook because queen to e1 would be check and that would you could block with the bishop but that would uh, stall your attack no you just capture with the bishop it's this is check and it will end very very quickly um, for instance king e7 we see in a lot of games Take the last piece that's not really in the attack. Bishop to g5. You know they're going, you're going to checkmate in some way, for instance, king to e, uh, e8, king back to the starting square, and you just go back to the first wave of the attack, the focus point of the entire opening, f7. And here, queen to f7 is checkmate, backed up by the bishop and this bishop takes away takes away d8 so this is just a sample variation to show that if white tries to go for the rook all the way over here on a1 which they do in most of the games you are just going to shred the king now let's take a look at some other variations a little bit of movie magic there to get back to the position after they capture on c2 and you play rook to d1 because I want to show you um, if they are less greedy and you just want to know what to do if they go instead of going for the rook that they go for the pawn because oh maybe aren't you winning in that position of course you are if they take on c2 you are completely winning, you just have to know what to do. So if they capture here, like so, we just want to get access to the king. So the first thing is you sacrifice the exchange, you take the rook, capture the knight. Asking questions like you have to do something about that as black. You thought okay, but it was protected, I recapture. Uh, here we are just we have our focal point for the third wave of the attack which is d5 we capture on d5 they can't capture with the queen because we would just capture their queen uh, so they capture with the pawn and here you're going to be play like a really cool move you're going to play queen e4 check how nice is that 
Oh, they can capture the queen. No. The bishop pins the pawn. And there's no time to capture the bishop either. Because it's check. And uh, pretty quickly you are uh, just going to win on d5. Because there's no way that uh, black can defend it twice now. Because if you move the king away, we can capture with the bishop. And the queen can't capture. And if you move, the, try to protect with the king here, well now it cuts the communication from the queen, so we can capture with the queen. And the attack is raging on, and you are going to win this. But even though the most popular move, knight takes c2, is what caused this, you of course want to know what to do if they are not playing knight to c2, knight takes c2. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so we are back in this position and black has decided that they are not going to capture on c2 with the knight. That is not how they are going to lose today. They are trying something else and if they feel particularly suicidal that day, they may try e takes on d4. We actually see this in some games and I have a bit of theory for you that is just delicious. Uh, and there's just a really interesting symmetrical motif that I'm going to show you. So of course if they capture like this and they open up towards your king, their king, you are going to play rook to e1, check to the king. Now the best move here is king to d7. And you have had d5 in your scopes all this time. Now you pull the plug, you pull the trigger and you play bishop takes. You start with the bishop so that it comes with a threat, like for instance bishop e6 checks backed up by the rook, so they have to capture. Now you capture with the knight. Just all this force on the third wave or the th second wave of the attack here, they capture with the pawn. You come in with the queen, that is check. Um, they go to c7. And here's the really cool bit. You play bishop f4 check to his majesty. They block with the bishop. And this is just, this is delicious. You don't capture the bishop like they may be thinking that they're getting out of it and they are still up a piece they have two bishops you have one so they're still up a piece and they think maybe they're going getting away with it but this this next thing is just so good you play queen c5 check you can't you can't capture that because of the bishop and there's only one move King to b1 and now I b8 and now I have a question for you. Can you remember the motif? And more importantly, can you remember that there is a correct way to do it? Of course here you capture the bishop with the queen first because it just feels so much better. This is check, there's only one legal move, queen takes. And what is the move? Bishop takes queen, and that is checkmate, symmetrical checkmate to one of the other checkmates that we saw earlier. Ain't that just delicious? Okay, so if they are feeling a bit less suicidal, they may try something else, and let take, let's take a look at that. Okay, a little bit of movie magic there. And let's take a look at the last variation that you should know because it is what uh, a grandmaster would play with black in this position. There is only one move. We saw a couple of attempts of black from black, you know, but uh, they all just backfired spectacularly. And that's the theme of the opening that you are asking these difficult questions and there is almost always only one 
single answer that doesn't just, you know, you don't, where well, you just don't fry the liver and eat it immediately. And here is the only good move for black, which is queen to f6. Against this, you play the interesting move queen to e2, pinning this and making ready to play moves like f4. And here, if you get to this position, uh, you are in the minority. Because out of the 3 million games in the database of leeches that use the fried liver attack, only 3,000 end in this position. So that is 1 in 1,000 games end in this position among the leeches player base. Uh, and this is the best case scenario for black. Is it bad for you? No. White is still doing excellently. You still have a raging attack. It's still extremely difficult to play for black. And you can have a lot of fun if you ever play a thousand games uh, in this opening. You will statistically get to this position once. And here you are still doing great and can have fun. So that is the fried liver. Bon appetit.